Hello and welcome to a Blood and Pigment Nationality Review. I'm Joseph. I'm Guy. And I'm Dan. The Spanish Empire of the 17th century was an empire in decline. While still nominally controlling 10% of the world's land and most of the gold and silver mines, very few of those resources trickled down to the average Spanish soldier or sailor. The Spanish and Blood and Plunder exemplify this. They have almost two nationwide special rules, poorly equipped and ruthless. When playing as the Spanish, it will usually feel like the odds are against you, and you need to exploit any opportunity you can. Spanish units are usually the worst as well, in almost every category. However, they do have a few standouts that are phenomenal, such as the Crosarios, the Soldados, and Lanceros. I still wake up in a cold sweat thinking about those Lanceros. <laughs> they do have a reputation in Blood and Blunder, don't they? Pokey stick, go poke. They do. All it all it takes is one time getting your musket unit ambushed by some Lanceros that popped out of the bushes to scar you permanently every time you see somebody wandering around with a stick with a point. <laughs> don't remind me. <laughs> yeah, the Spanish really fascinate me in this era. They're technically the most powerful but they're also just kind of pathetic. <laughs> they are. They are. I remember uh, in one of our first games, you had 12 uh, Milicianos jump out of a longboat and shoot five inches away, and only one of them hit. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. Well, yeah, the militia are not very good, although they're really good in a scrap. A lot of the Spanish units are pretty good at a melee, but overall I find the Spanish to be one of the harder uh, nations to play successfully. You have to be pretty skilled. I think you have quite a few disadvantages, and your strong uh, points are kind of hard to access, in my opinion. Yeah, let's go over the land battles really quickly. They have two two factions in the nationality that are mostly specialized with land battles, but you can play any of the other factions on land and usually will have a better time than playing <laughs> as the Spanish militia or Splen or the uh, Tercios, which are their two premier land factions. The Spanish militia, uh, their primary unit for a long time was the Milicianos, which you get in a, uh, eight of them in a box of uh, the Spanish start collecting. And they're a really bad unit. Their stat line is um, six fight and six fight save, What like what you're saying, Joseph, about being good in a fight. Uh, but they have seven, eight for the shoot scores and resolve six, and they have poorly equipped. So... They uh, are they die really easily and they panic really easily. I kind of wish they were like two points or two and a half points because they should be pretty pretty bad. But yeah, it feels like they're a little worse than most of the other nations' militia. But the price is the same. If you do get the ruthless train going, they can be pretty good. I mean, you've kicked me around pretty bad with some uh, Spanish forces, but usually it's from that horrible stone tower. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the militia is not their best unit. With the recent No Peace Beyond the Line, when it came out, they did get Hostigadores, which are 100% 100 better. They're <laughs> the same price as a trained militia, and they're hard to kill. They have a six-shoot save. They're really what you should be running instead of Milicianos anytime. Yeah, just their save. They aren't quite as good in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. But the six shoot save rather than eight just makes them light years better than the Miliciano. So, yeah, if you're having trouble with the Spanish militia with your core rule book, uh, check out the Force Builder and look at the Hostigadori stat line. It cost four, but a lot more fun. So to did use. trained militia. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. If you want them to use muskets, they need to be trained for the most part. The Spanish militia is a very interesting faction. I do enjoy playing it mostly because of the variety it presents it has a lot of commanders and it has a lot of possible unit options and it has three distinct force options that kind of change up your core and support unit options so it's very deep and interesting faction lots of fun but 
it is a little hard to have a powerful force with it unless you really know what you're doing, in my opinion. But I do enjoy the variety. We just bring a ton of models. I have a player who does that. He just brings a ton and drowns us in Milicianos. <laughs> the Spanish are already orcs, so the blood and thunder. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good analogy. One thing you'll find with a lot of Spanish units is that they're really a faction of or of specialists. Uh, each model is specialized in doing one thing. They have dedicated Malay units, uh, the Lanceros that are five points each. They have a dedicated harassing unit or harassers, uh, the Milicianos Indios, which mm -hmm. Those are fun. have they have bows. They're not deadly, but they're meant to kind of keep you on your toes. And they can get deadly in close close range if they're able to uh, charge. They only have a five fight score, even though they have an eight fight save. <laughs> yeah. So, And they also have bows, so they don't have to worry about reloading. They have the core cavalry, the Caballera, which are just mounted Milicianos. They have the same stat line as Milicianos for six points each instead of three points each. And they, <laughs> they come train. But they have the Caballero Lancero, which are mounted lancers, which are deadly, but just very, very specialized. You don't have the general purpose six-point model in most of the Spanish uh, forces. And even when you look into the Terracios, which um, is the other kind of land-based faction, their six-point model, the Sodados, they do a lot, but they, they still need support from the uh, either Hostagadores or the Lanceros to to really shine the most. They're... You, they're in a Spanish force. They're the one that is supposed to put fatigue on a unit, so everybody else's ruthless kicks in. And if you just have a bunch of soldados, then you're not able to take care of that or take advantage of that as much. The Tertios is a good faction, though. I think it's slightly uh, more mainstream. Yeah, those soldados. Combined with some cheaper Hostigadores and maybe some Milicianos Indios, that's a pretty good force. And the cool thing about this force is you can drop the poorly equipped rule on your better trained soldiers. So pretty good, pretty strong choice if you're looking for land Spanish. Yeah, it's a lot of fun too. But it's it's again more more specialist forces than you'll get like running nothing but rebooters. <laughs> yeah. Freebooters and, and Forlorn Hope. Because um, Freebooters and, and Fleebusays, well, they'll do everything, whereas Soldados can do everything. They have a good some good melee saves, but you really want them to stand back and do expertly drilled shots the whole game. That's why you're yeah, paying six points for them. Yeah. Especially and a strong you, unit. Yeah. And then that will cover your Milicianos. Most units of Milicianos Indios that I've seen and played myself, they're usually a sacrificial unit that you you want to get out there to harass the opponent and maybe run away. You can absorb like, a lot of shots too because they have good save. Yeah, yeah, they have the um, thick shoot save and elusive. So That's if they're hiding out, yeah, and they're quick scouts too. <laughs> Quick scouts, yeah, skirmishers. skirmishers. Yeah. yeah, great unit. Yeah, so that's kind of a, and the secret about the secret sauce, I think, for a lot of the Spanish uh, faction, or I mean, um, nationality as a whole, is what you can do is if you don't want to use Milicianos, you can use the um, Marineros, their sailor unit, in a faction as the kind of give them muskets. And they're better than Milicianos a lot of the time. Yeah, that is entertaining. They have a better shoot save and a better resolve. You just pay a tiny bit more for them. It's kind of funny. Yeah, four points per that's, that's unit. Cheating. I don't think so. <laughs> you can give them grenades, too, at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way. Uh, until books in the future come out, the Marineros are the only way to give uh, Spanish units... Uh, grenades or fire pots or stink pots. <laughs> wow, that's true. Oh, and soldados. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mariners and soldados. 
So that's the Spanish on land. How about at sea? How do they stack up? They have a lot more options for sure. They have six different um, factions at sea. We got the Armada de Barlavento, the Garda Costas, the Spanish Corsairs, and the Austin Privateers. And they have two legendary factions Corsarios de Perdal and one Corsos Corsairs. A bunch of options there. I find that Juan Corso's Corsairs are a really premier legendary sea faction. My brother likes to play them often, and Corsarios are no joke. They're one of the few units that I hesitate before charging with my Enter Ploeg, and I need to soften them up because I've charged them head first before thinking I got this in the bag, and then realized, oh, they're a lot tougher than I thought they were. <laughs> it's funny you guys like the Cor uh, Corsairs so much. Corsarios, I don't like the unit. I always feel bad when I play them. I uh, maybe I play them wrong, but I feel like the six-point French and six-point English models outclass them in almost every single way. Just my opinion. <laughs> you know, that's a good opinion to have. I have had the same experience as Dan, though, where I had them on a ship just sitting there as a uh, as a unit um, to provide some musket support, and I had the opponent charge into them, and they held their ground... And because they charge with swords, uh, that that swordsman, it doesn't happen a lot. But it's fun when it triggers. It's very rare. And yeah, it's going to... I think the main move. thing is that yeah. they're good at fighting and they're good at shooting and they have good resolve. Whereas you'll find in the game, at least in my opinion, most units are either good at one or the other. And even the freebooters are six points a model. They're good at shooting. And while they have pistol sidearms, I generally keep them out of combat. But the Casarios, when I saw them loaded with muskets, I was like, oh, you know, they're, they'll be bad at melee. I got this. Then get into combat. Oh, they're actually they're actually pretty good. Huh. Yeah, they have a five fight with Ruthless. That can be brutal, but they don't have any sidearm. No. Nope. I'd rather have a six fight with a reroll than a five fight with that one. But Yeah, they're, they're not perfect, but they'll definitely catch you off guard. <laughs> they do compare really bad to Fleet Buzets or Freebooters. Uh, but kind of do, but like the number of times I've been again, like had them interact in positive ways. Like once you get that ruthless to kick in, you got a unit with five shoot. That's pretty yeah. cool to be a Spanish player with a unit that has five shoot that doesn't, it didn't use a drill shot or something. And, at, you know, at sea, uh, if you're playing the, one of the Corsair, uh, things you probably don't have a lot of room for cannons, but you can you can nest the Cosarios on the uh, on a deck as a um, next to your your cannon deck because you're you're sailing with sweeps usually if you're Corsairs Corsairs I mean so they're they're safe from a lot of shots that way I haven't had a lot of people choose to pick on them that's what I'm saying. So I've played quite a bit of Spanish. I started in Spanish. Can I just run through and kind of give my impression of all six of these factions? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Garda Costas, it's kind of the Spanish militia of the sea. Not a lot of options either. So I'd say they're the weakest. Not very good. They have some fun commander options. Armada de Barlavento, it's kind of the Tercios of the sea. They're actually decent from uh, good options. Their Marineros Piqueros is a really good unit. It can make your uh, artillery hard to kill. It can be a very durable cannon ship. Uh, Spanish Corsairs are really fun. You kind of just punt around with sweeps, go really fast, and annoy people. Ignore the wind. <laughs> yeah, usually smaller boats, kind of fun, very different style. Austin the Privateers. If I could interrupt you, they get the free grappling too, which is huge. Yeah. They're like, really a pesky. <laughs> really fun yeah. in Paraguas. Austin Privateers aren't Spanish, they're Dutch, so that's a good faction. <laughs> yeah. uh, Los Corsarios de Pardal, kind of like Garda Costas with a crazy commander. It's, again, not very good, but very entertaining. has some fun rules for Pardal. He's a weird commander. <laughs> and one Corsairs, Corsairs gets the award for hardest uh, name to say. And it's kind of an amped up Spanish Corsairs. I really like the Knight Attack. Um, rule that Juan Corso has. So again, good at punting around with uh, sweeps and grappling. So heavy boarding list. 
and some good unit options there. Great unit options. Yeah, the but, the two Spanish uh, legendary commanders, uh, their faction abilities are really some of the most unique in the game. Pardal, his command ability is he gets to issue a challenge to one of the, outrageous <laughs> to one of the enemy units, and when he issues that challenge, uh, it it becomes a a duel between the two units almost. Um, it's really it's really weird. I've played it. I've played him as a commander once because. I wanted to use that ability, and I issued a challenge, and then that I never had that faction I issued the challenge to attack Partle, and he <laughs> never attacked that unit because it was always something else was more more of a threat. Seems like that hap- has happened to me too. Yeah, it's a cool rule, but it's so easy to miss on. <laughs> yeah, and you only get to do it once, right. um, and, and that's you have. Rule. <laughs> Well, they get a, a plus three like most legendaries uh, okay. to attack. Yeah. But the uh, Juan Corsos Cor- Corsairs, that one also is really unique. Uh, it's the only faction in the game that I know of that lets you put terrain down as part of their faction thing. You guys sure. know of any others? I don't think there's even any in the works that have that. Not off the top of my head, no. Yeah. So he brings a he brings an island or a shoal with him wherever he goes. He just is towing it in his uh Paraguay, <laughs> I guess. Uh he, he you get to you get to plop it out um uh or have it be night, which that's pretty cool. Uh his him as a commander himself, he lets you kind of lay in wait on shoals or islands. So that's, again, something really unique that he does that I really like. Yeah, I love that knight rule, especially if he's in Paraguas. With the low-profile rule, ships can't even see Paraguas at more than 12 inches. So you can you can actually use a cannon and shoot off your Paragua at a big ship, and they can't see you until you start shooting. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Yeah, it's the Not only that reason win you to have... Game, but... Yeah, <laughs> only reason to have late gunships. <laughs> uh, I've had a lot of fun with his with the uh, other Spanish Sea factions. The uh, Armada is great. Yeah, it's a good faction. And then, like Spanish. we said, the Austin privateers are basically just Dutch mercenaries working for the Spanish. You get Zeleiden capers, which is all you really need for a boat. And then you can take the Casaros if you need them. And European sailors is core. That's a good one. Then you have Ruthless access to Interplog. <laughs> And then yeah. Ruthless Enter Plug. Yeah. <laughs> you get Dutch Units, which is gold. And you get Ruthless, which is awesome. And you get No Poorly Equip. So they're kind of the best of both worlds. And you get Dutch Commanders, so you can bring the experienced Dutch Sea Commander, which we've talked about, is has strict and broadside. <laughs> and, <ruthless. laughs> and, and Ruthless, <laughs> so you can do the... You can just have a Dutch Cannon Ship. Uh, with Austin Privateers. It is it is kind of funny. It's a good faction. It is. Yeah. But it's a good faction really mainly because... The Spanish box. <laughs> yeah, you can't... You'd have to buy the, the European, start collecting, and a bunch of Zelayden. It's a good faction because it's not a Spanish faction. That's what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> they also get European Sailors uh, co- as a core unit with Ruthless, which means that... <laughs> yeah, you can give them muskets, and you can just... That can be your land faction right there, is European sailor <laughs> brute squads running around. <laughs> Not the way it's intended to be played, but it is much more effective Dang. than most of the animals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Much, a lot better. Not as good in a, in a close-range fight, but close. It's just a Dutch ship that just poorly colored the Spanish flag over their flag. Yeah, we're Spanish now. <laughs> <laughs> So we've ragged on the Spanish, kind of joking a lot, but what are the main reasons to play the Spanish in Blood and Thunder? Variety of models. Yeah. You can just bring a lot of cool stuff. They do have some unique models. I mean, if you want to mix some of your, you know, traditional European affair with some of, like, you know, the natives kind of, like, guerrilla tactics, you can do that. 
There's not a lot of other factions that allow you to do that. The only ones I can think of are the what are they called? The Dutch um what are they called? Boss loppers, but they're not quite there. Whereas the Spanish have access to a lot of the native units, or at least, you know, colonized native units that work with them. So there's just a wide variety of stuff you can bring. They do have the most access to native models. In fact, the Spanish militia, you can make a faction of all natives if you want. So they have, yeah, everybody has options for taking natives, but the Spanish more so than anyone else. It's also good to note that during the era that Blood and Flinder takes uh, place, in the 17th century, Spanish militia was uh, segregated into um, into Africans, Europeans, and mixed race. So it lets you, as a, a painter and designer, have some really unique looking forces. Where, like, if you want a all all black militia force, this is you can do them as Spanish. That was historically accurate at the time to have you know, a, a, a faction like that. So that's kind of fun in my myself, like, to show that history on the tabletop. The other reason to play the Spanish is kind of what we said in previous videos, where in your group, somebody needs to be the villain, and the Spanish <laughs> of the air are the villain. They're the, they're the one that everybody usually fought rather than each other because they had a majority of the wealth in the, the Caribbean. So somebody has to play the Spanish. You don't want to be you don't want to be doing English versus French all day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's it's fun to, to fun to be the Spanish uh, occasionally, especially fighting the Dutch. Yeah, their history really fascinates me. Just there are a lot of contradictions and interesting things. They are in some ways they're less villainous than some of the other <laughs> nations. I mean, further south, I mean, nobody was really nice back then, especially to the native peoples. Yeah. But in some ways, they treated them a little bit better. In fact, a lot of uh, black and natives would flee from the English and French squabbles, or mostly the English, actually, English with <laughs> nasties, and come down to Florida to get relief from being slave, enslaved or shipped off. But yeah, there it is fun to play the Empire. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> another thing is just the uh, the model count whenever again i'll throw a shout out here one of my players martin he exclusively seems to play spanish and it always seems like he always has more units than us and it's jarring when we're all playing typical you know european fair we have maybe in a 100 point game maybe four to s four squads and he comes in bringing six and you're like oh the numbers game has arrived <laughs> we always give him crap about it but he's he's really good and that's one of the huge things why I was interested in kind of playing them, because he can just bring so many more models. Granted, they're not as good, but he if also knows nose, how to play yeah. Spanish <laughs> really well. He knows how to play Spanish really well. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it takes a lot of skill to do well, so props to him. I think I, I did, wasn't it 60, 68 in a 200-point game? <laughs> oh, jeez. I, I beat you on that one, though. <laughs> yeah. Barely. Using on paper the best thing to fight sixty eight Spanish units, which was a, you know, your uh, the field gun. King, King, yeah. it, was, it was essentially it was an arrow field gun. It was King Golden Calf. <laughs> Every time the act he activated like sixty <laughs> arrows. <but. laughs> Three command points on natives with arrows is fun. Our arrows will block out the sun. Exactly. <laughs> Oh god, they did. Uh, <laughs> he almost the way human way of almost took the field, but a I don't know the Spanish for it. "ow, it hurts." Pull the arrow out of my eye, but that's what it sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I play the Spanish for the variety and for the history. The commanders also are pretty interesting. There's a lot of interesting guys there with fun rules. So that's why I like them, and that's what I started with. So kind of my first faction, first nation. Gives you some variety, like like you mentioned that Dan, the variety of the models. Uh, most of the like the Spanish uh, start collecting box comes with eight militia guys. It comes with eight guys that have pointy sticks, and it comes with four sailors, and it comes with four guys with bows. That is the most weapon variety 
out of all the start collecting boxes. <laughs> Usually the selecting go- start collecting box has, okay, here's 20 models that have muskets. <laughs> and four that have pistols. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, four have pistols. In spite of the variety of weapons, they actually have a fairly limited model line. They actually, get this, they haven't had a new unit, a new model, a new piece of metal since the game came out. Not unique to Spanish. They can use like the Musketeer model for their oh, yeah, models yeah. and stuff. But they have some fun models, but they just haven't had anything new. But you can use all those models for a lot of things. This Miliciano model has uh, been repurposed for a, a lot of things. It, it's used for the Hostigatori and the Corsario. Um, so with a limited number of models, you can do quite a few different forces, which is kind of nice. I will also say, subjectively, they have the coolest vanilla commander sculpt in the online exclusive Spanish commander, where he's got his rapier out and his hand up in the air, all pretentious like. I love that model. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do like the uh, Juan Corsair, um, or Juan Corso model as well, because he's drawing. Yeah, he's the a sword. good one too. He's drawing the sword while dashing forward. <laughs> like. It's such a good model. Um, There's the ultra rare part all model with uh, two pistols too. Yeah, he's so cool. <laughs> Only two piece model on his without a horse. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, the well, it, the it, it was the first two piece one. I count the um, the pikemen as two piece models. No, oh, yeah, that's fair. See, they have that long toothpick they come with. You poke your eye out with your painting, yeah. Anyway, Spanish. <laughs> Spanish are a lot of fun. I, they are not very good. Uh, I think th- none of us have said that yet. I do think there are a couple Spanish lists that you can play that are very good. So I'm not saying every time you play Spanish, you're going to lose. Um, there are a lot of Spanish lists where... You're just going to you're going to steamroll the opponent because they don't know what's going. Whether it's because you brought too many men to the fight and they don't have enough basketballs to kill everybody before they kill them, or uh, you worked out a really unique commander that you found that just is really good. There's a couple Spanish commanders that do really interesting things or really th- or very powerful things that for a lot cheaper than they can they should. Yeah, you were playing that Peralta guy. He's pretty great. Determination, getting tough on everybody. <laughs> Some big Navy guys, 30 points. Gare, he's awesome. A video is great. Zerati is really interesting. He has three command points, but he's really cheap. But he might just get heat stroke and die. <laughs> Some fun stuff going on. So, yeah, Would you really say crazy. they're bad, or do they just have a high skill ceiling? No, they're bad. I'd say, the, I'd say that the weakest of all the major nations as far as just pure power level, but they also have some of the most entertaining and uh, the largest, highest variety of options, too. Yeah, I could agree with that. Yeah. Well, I think that about wraps it up. For more Blood and Thunder articles on the Spanish, you can go over to bloodandpigment.com and check out all the articles there. I think we have almost all the factions reviewed in detail and an article on the nation. We have other articles on ships, nations, factions, terrain building, painting guides, battle reports, and new product previews, too. Go check it out there. Check out the rest of our YouTube channel as well. We'll be aiming to put out a video every Monday. Subscribe and ring the ship's bell so you can stay notified of our uploads. As always, keep your dice ready and the wind at your back, yar-har.